Hello, welcome to A Life Without Parole. Today, I'm so excited about my guest and I cannot believe that I am the one who got to have her on my channel and you're gonna find out that she has so much insight, all the questions that you've been wondering that we just can't seem to get the answers to, you're gonna find out a lot of the insights. And that is because the person that I'm going to be interviewing today has was a personal friend of Chad Daybell and some of that group. So today, I would like to introduce Miss Janelle Murphy. She is a mother, a teacher. <laughs> Janelle has taught at an anthropology class at UVU, as well as being a guest speaker of religion and spirituality. So without further ado, welcome. Thank you so much for coming to A Life Without Parole. I have so many questions for you. So the first thing we're gonna do is I wanted to ask, when was the first time that you met Chad Daybell? Um, I can't remember when I met him, but I do remember before I met him, um, I read some of his books, his book series, because I lived in Springville at the time and him and Tammy actually lived in Springville at the time. And so I got interested. I was kind of open to spiritual ways at that time. And so I, I can't even remember how I got his books, but I got his books and started reading them. And that's how I knew about Chad. So okay. So through. you were reading his books and you didn't actually meet him at that time. No. Is that correct? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to kind of rapid fire a few people that were, um, in some of the documents that we know oh. were involved with Chad. And then maybe we'll do some rapid fire questions about them when you first met them or where, and then okay. it might come back around where we talk about them some more, but so okay. how about Lori Vallow? Lori, I was quite interesting because I have never, as, as many conferences that I've been to and been to different events um, where she has been with Chad, I have never really met Lori Vallow um, in person. I, I don't remember that. I've stayed in the same place um, in, um, in St. George with with them, all of us stayed together in this big, beautiful cabin and I never met her. So wow. I, I thought that was quite interesting. So I'd never met Lori. I knew Melanie, Melanie Gibb, because Melanie and Lori were of course friends and I was friends with Melanie Gibb at one time as well, but I had never hung out or met with them. It just seemed like I had felt like when she was with Lori that I kind of needed to take a back seat and not be so engaged in that relationship with them. I just felt a little uncomfortable with that. I, I don't know why I did at the time, but I do now. I know why. So do you think that, um, okay, that time that you met that you all stayed in a cabin, was that the first time that Chad and Lori met each other? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll do a deep dive into that. We're gonna just kind of skim a few people and we'll come back to that one because that one's, there's a lot, a lot we can talk about there. Okay. How about Julie Rowe? Have you ever met Julie Rowe? Um, I've never met Julie Rowe. I actually, when I was introduced to Chad's books and then knew he was a publisher, then I started reading Julie Rowe's books and that's what I knew of Julie Rowe. Um, I know the first Preparing a People conference that we went to, uh, she was there and I was going to introduce myself to her and I, I was told not to. Like, something had told me you don't need to meet her. And so I didn't, I didn't meet her. So that's as far as I know of Julie Rowe, but I've never met her before. So, yeah. Okay. How about uh, Mike and Nancy James? Yes. 
I was good friends with um, Nancy. I um, I met Nancy many years ago and just kind of hit it off with her in Springville when she lived there. And then they were doing filming for um, Rod Meldrum's Book of Mormon Expo and reconnected with her there. And so, yeah, I knew Mike and Nancy and they're good friends of mine. I consider them good friends of mine. So, okay, explain yeah. how Mike and Nancy tie in with Chad Daybell. Okay, um, Mike and Nancy um, were filming for Book of Mormon Expo and they kind of had a, a, how do I put it, a mission that they wanted to do. I guess you could say like they had felt like they wanted to bring people closer to Christ. And so they were thinking of some names and um, preparing people was something that um, was important to them. Um, they wanted to prepare people for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so they started doing a conference and inviting people to do those conferences um, who have had spiritual gifts or different things. I want to make it clear here, though, that just because somebody has a spiritual gift doesn't mean that that is an evil thing, but it's the way you use those gifts with those because I have seen amazing things that have come about with spiritual gifts. So I think it all depends on your heart and where your heart is, if it's in the right place or not. So um, that's, I know their heart was in the right place when they started that. I think it was just a platform for Chad to meet Lori um, it wasn't any fault of Mike and Nancy at all, um, but they just wanted to get together and have a conference with um, different spiritual people who had um, different spiritual experiences so that everybody could learn in that way. Okay. So. Now, um, if, if you're talking about somebody like myself who's never been to a preparing a people conference, what kind of things were going on at the conferences? Um, they had different subjects. Um, of course, you know, Chad was the last day stuff with his books. Um, Sean Little Bear came and talked about um, native prophecies. Um, some talked about the constitution. So there was just different things, dreams and visions. Um, of course, the warriors, <laughs> you know, um, with Jason Mao and and warrioring up, he had his book series, um, so he got to speak. And of course, Melanie Gibb um, got to write her book and fill the fire book and got to speak um, with them as well. So just kind of like her her growing up or her kind of her background and how how things helped her and so she had written that book and wanted to be a part of that and so she did so there were there were different things that um different subjects that okay. were people spoke on that shows you how much i know because i for some reason i visualized it as being kind of like a um doomsday prepper group i i think of it as and so i mean i mean i don't know i haven't been to it but um, like uh, get food storage and tents and all of that, but that is not what preparing of people was? I think, I don't think they, in my opinion, they really didn't focus on like doomsday prepper stuff. I think some of the subjects did though. I think like, um, it all depends on the group because there were groups within groups. Okay. So um, I know that Chad had talked about that, some of his dreams and visions and how um, Idaho would be this gathering place and how there would be an earthquake on the, the west side of the United States and how people would come down and, and that would be a gathering place there. So I know he talked about that stuff. I know him and Julie Rowe had talked about that. Um, sometimes they didn't, 
um, focus on that in preparing the people, but other groups, like they had firesides. I would say there was, from what I, I can tell you, that there was like the preparing a people group where where everybody was friends with everybody, like the presenters. But there was another group that um, Chad would talk to like in firesides or people's homes. Um, and then there was also what I call his, his evil um, inner circle. Oh, yeah. So there were different groups that I, I feel like he catered to. Some, I think he felt like he could talk about some things and not in other places. Okay, that makes and sense. with preparing a people, he didn't delve into the other stuff with his evil, evil circle group. You didn't hear the zombie <laughs> so, stuff there, huh? No, no zombie apocalypse, nothing that like my, that. That's one of my questions. It was, <laughs> it was a gathering in Rexburg is what it was. So okay. that's what it was for preparing the people. But I think it just depended on where he spoke, tell you the truth. So, That makes yeah. sense. I was thinking about during the trial some of the things that came out and specifically when Melanie Gibb and David Warwick stayed at Lori's house they seemed it appeared based on the court documents that they were preparing for something they were looking to buy property and making tent yeah. cities and all that so that's separate from preparing a people or that's just like a group in a group that's like a group within a group okay yeah okay. that was that was the group within the group that Sean and I didn't belong to, I guess you could say. So, okay. and we're gonna yeah. we're gonna dive into that in a minute. Why you didn't belong? <laughs> but we'll let's go ahead and finish down our our names, and then we'll we'll uh, go in deeper on how you were ostracized. Lucky for you. Maybe I should have said that. I'll probably cut that out. <laughs> Now let's move on. How about Zulema? Did you ever meet Zulema? I did meet Zulema. Um, I didn't know her too well. I just met her once briefly, and that was in the October 26th, um, the weekend of the October 26th. That was the weekend that um, Chad and Lori met each other because oh. we were staying at in St. George at the cabin, and she was there with um the other ladies and i'm sure these other ladies are probably the ones that were in california that some of them had castings or different things with and i had met her and i remember um them introducing me to zilema and saying that she was an energy worker and i thought oh good like a, a healer like you know i i felt like i kind of oh okay you know that's what she was but it was very different. <laughs> an energy worker, I, I feel like an energy worker is different um, in the context of you're, you're working with energy, but, but to be a healer is, I don't know how to say it, it's more with your heart, I guess you can say. Um, I've seen how energy work was really demonized with this Chad Daybell thing and how they were sending, um, sending energy and, and damaging the kids or whatever, wanting to do that. And the intent, you can tell right there, the intent of his heart was not in the right place. It definitely was not in the right place. So when you start doing stuff like that, you start um, moving into something notorious and evil if you want to call it it call it that yeah so, so how many how many people came with lori on that initial trip to saint george um you know what i i don't know i know zulema was there i know melanie and yeah lori and i had met like a couple other women but i don't remember their names but I don't know if they traveled in the same car, but I know they came from Arizona and they knew them. They were kind of in that group. And did they so stay in that big cabin with you where you mm -hmm. all stayed? Okay. Now, yeah. Alex was not there at that time, right? 
No, Alex was not there. Okay. Nope. Yeah, curious when he popped in. Okay, how about Christopher, I don't know, is it Parrot? P-A-R-R-E-T-T, Parrot? Um, I don't know much about him as far as I know. I think he was part of a vow. Um, okay. I think he was. I think he was kind of the person that was a big Chad Daybell fan, fan from what I, when I understand. He, I think he ha held out hope a lot for for Chad when everything broke, but there has to come a point where you realize he wasn't who he claimed to be, this spiritual guru who he, who he thought he would be. Okay, so. so tell me what the difference between preparing a people and a vow, what's the difference? Um, actually a vow was a, a platform or a forum on, on the um, computer that people would put their dreams and visions and spiritual experiences on. And so they would, they would talk about that stuff, but then there would also be on a vow where you had to pay, um, to be able to like, <laughs> like the inner circle kind of thing, um, you had to pay for that as well. And I think Chad was on there and um, did a lot of articles and different things like so, that. So like a subscription or a newsletter or something and you're paying for it? Yeah. yeah. And do you know how much it cost? I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't really get into into a vow. No. I didn't do that. But and, I, I just that was about not Mike and Nancy's. No, okay. it definitely was not, not Mike and Nancy. Okay. So Chad just kind of did that, you know, with them. And I think Julie Rowe was in that as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I don't know if Mike and Nancy had a subscription. I'm not sure. I can't, I can't tell you, but um, that wasn't, that was totally separate okay. um, from there. So I, when you brought up Julie Rowe, it reminded me that I forgot to ask a question when we were talking about her. What kind of um, things was she talking about when she would speak early on? Mm -hmm. She talked about, if I can remember right, I know she talked about Jesus Christ. I know she talked about her near-death experience, things that she had been shown that would happen. Um, I think this is where the Wasatch Wake Up came from, was a, a lot of things that, um, that she had seen, that she was shown. Um, in her in her near death experience, okay, you're gonna and have to explain what that means. Wasatch wake up. Yes, Wasatch wake up is where they you're supposed to have like an earthquake here in um, in Utah, and from what I understand is that it would have taken place sometime in the morning and maybe like in the springtime that. People have seen that there would still be ice, but um, and yeah, who was, like who was spring. predicting that? Um, you know what? I've heard more than one person say oh. that. Okay. But I know that uh, Julie Rowe had talked about the Wasatch Wake Up, and so they were trying to do a um, kind of organize a five hundred one c three to um, help people with that and get prepared. I. I just want to touch on something here that I've noticed that there are a lot of people are talking about near death experiences. They're talking about um, visions of glory is another one that a lot of people talk about um, because Lori was really um, into that. I believe that's um, the book she was reading when they yes. gave her papers in, in Hawaii. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is this is just me, that people had these visions and different dreams and different things for a reason, but it does not mean that it's going to happen exactly that way that they've seen it. But is that I what think Visions of Glory book does is tell us about yes. earthquakes and things? Okay. I think it's a way to make us think a little bit different than what we have. But from what I feel, it's not going to happen exactly the way these people have these dreams and visions and it's going to happen. Because just because they have those, 
that could be a possibility, but it's not written in stone that that's going to happen. The thing that is written in stone is what's in the scriptures, like for the last days, you know, like the book of revelations or the Bible, those things are written in stone, but these things, it can open people up to the possibility and teach them. But as we can see, especially with like the earthquake that was supposed to happen, when was it July? It never happened. And I know it depends on individuals and a nation, um, how these things happen. And so um, I think you gotta be very careful with that. To dreams and visions, you really have to um, kind of go by your own feeling of what you feel with those. But that's what I felt about that. I feel like with the, the dreams and visions and the scriptures um, that Chad and Lori were trying to make that script short. That's what I feel like they were doing. And I, I feel like if there was a true servant of God, they wouldn't be looking to a book for that of visions of glory. They wouldn't be doing that. So... I've heard from quite a few different people that um, it appears that a lot of um, Chad's prophecies seem to be something that he read from somebody else's books. I don't, you know, I don't know. I haven't read his books or that book, so I don't know. But I've heard a few yeah. people say that. It, it, so I wonder if he's reading it so he can then. I've heard that it. too. I, I, I remember when he talked about his books first, saying they were fiction. And then I think as he progressed and moved on, then he would talk about them as, then he would say, well, you know, I said they were fiction, but really, and these were in a different group, but really I had this, these dreams with my kids in these stories. Mm -hmm. And so he, he put his kids in there. So it went from, from that to, you know, that it was fiction to, you know, he, he dreamed that it was his kids. And so, and people, I think were willing to accept that. So. Yeah. I remember I was living in Nebraska at the time of when this case first started. And I remember there was maybe a small earthquake in Utah. I think I heard maybe in 2020 or 2019 or something. And everyone's mm -hmm. like, Oh, that's the one. That's the one. But it was just. That's the little, Wasatch wake up. Wasatch and, and it wake up. It was in the morning, but was it? yeah, it was in the morning, but you, didn't feel um, it in Omaha. <laughs> you know what? I, I didn't feel it either. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, I so looked at Springville in the time at, at the time and I didn't feel it either, but okay. I know there's people that did, but okay. yeah, maybe that was the Wasatch wake up. I don't know, but yeah, I, I feel like it maybe could be a warning, you know, but yeah. I, I just don't yeah. think that their predictions have come full circle. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on to, uh, Sarah. Don't know how to say this last name. Menet, M E N E T. Menet? I don't know. Her. Don't know her. Hector oh. Sosa. Hector. Yes. I, um, I know Hector Sosa. Well, I, I probably wasn't like friends, friends with him, but, um, but we knew him like through preparing the people. And I, I think Hector's heart was in the right place when he talked about things. I do think that he um, had his spiritual gifts. Um, and was he a speaker? He was a presenter? Yeah, oh, he, he I, I first heard of Hector in um, the Book of Mormon Expo. Um, where I, he didn't, he didn't really want to talk a whole lot from what I remember, but he did share some of the things that, um, that he saw or dreamed or different things like that. Um, but I think he was very careful. Um, and I, I found his heart to be very genuine. Yeah. I want to meet some of these people. Okay. Sean Little Bear. Sean Little Bear, do I know him? 
Um, yes, I, I know Sean. Um, I, I first met Sean at the Book of Mormon Expo. He came in and was um, talking about native, native prophecies at the Book of Mormon Expo. And then um, he was actually the first one to be the keynote speaker for preparing a people. I actually, I think I actually reconnected with Mike and Nancy, Nancy in particular through Sean. So um, Nancy knew Sean, and of course, Nancy and Mike were filming for the Book of Mormon Expo, and so I had reconnected with her again through him. And so he was he was the first keynote speaker um, for Preparing a People, and um, he wasn't one that organized with it, because I think there's a big m- mix-up. Um, on one of the other interviews that he he didn't. He was like the keynote speaker. So um, he came in and talked about um, native prophecies. And so at the time I was, I was learning things and um, I was kind of comparing things that he said with the ex- spiritual experiences that I had had and um, just did that. And then eventually later on, um, we had a relationship and got married and it was a very quick marriage. I, um, without getting into too much, I, I, um, him and I divorced and then I felt like I, um, maybe didn't get enough time. And I had felt like, um, we could do some things together for our native people. And actually we did for a very, very, very short season. We went down to have a soup pie and it was, it was the most amazing, beautiful experience of my life, um, serving our people and, and doing healing for some of them and hearing their stories. And um, it was a great time, something that I will always treasure in my heart of being there among our people doing some great things. And I thought that more would be that way, but it wasn't. And so um, it just happened that we went our separate ways. Um, so what what tribe are you from? My father is actually from the Diné tribe, which is what is considered the Navajo tribe. Mm. So yeah. We're very close with the Omaha tribe because we lived in Omaha oh. for so long. So I'd love to hear. <laughs> okay, let's move on. How about Mike Stroud? Um, I haven't met Mike Stroud. I know that he was um, Jason Mao's seminary teacher. I know that he um, wrote some books, um, some spiritual things. I know that he was um, excommunicated. But I, I didn't know Mike Stroud that I didn't know him at all. And I don't think, I think when he spoke, I, I wasn't there. It was, it was at a preparing of people where I was told not to go, mm. which is quite interesting. Um, yeah, that's quite interesting. Let's save so, that one for our second half. We're going to have this in two parts. I got to write a note so I don't forget. I got to write this down. Um, yeah, we'll come back to that. We gotta save some of the, some of the, for the next Thanks. part. Okay, how about, um, so Mike was a presenter at the Preparing of People, but not at the Book of Mormon Expo? Who? Mike Stroud. Um, yeah, not at the Book of Mormon that I, I know of, he wasn't. Okay. okay, how about Rod Meldrum? Yes, I, I know Rod. Um, he is the one that's, um, in charge of Book of Mormon Expo. Oh, okay. So, yeah, Rod is, um, yeah, one that um, has people come in and talk about, like, again, the Constitution or um, um, mainly how the Book of Mormon took place in the northern part of America. Mm-hmm. Talks a lot about that, um, different different subjects like that. And then he would have people come in and um, you know, sell different things or whatever to um, maybe preparedness stuff or different things. So um, 
he had he has a lot to do with like Hannah Stoddard is one of one of his speakers and that's been there for a while and he talks about like native things as well and do so, they still have conferences or mm -hmm. oh they still have them yeah okay all right here comes the next one melanie gibb when did you meet melanie yes melanie <laughs> <laughs> um let's see i was i think it was our second preparing the people conference up in Idaho and Sean had come in and we drove to um, we drove to Idaho together and um, I was just listening to some of the speakers and we had a break and so I had went in the bathroom and I was washing my hands and that's when I saw Melanie and she came up and she introduced herself to me and told me that she sees a lot of light from me. And um, we just talked to her, which it was really kind of nice because at that point I knew Mike and Nancy. I didn't know a whole lot of people at the time, um, but it was nice to be able to connect with her and hang out with her. Her and her husband were there and then Sean and I were there. And so we sat by them and um, just got to know them a bit and then exchanged numbers. And this would and, have been her first husband, correct? Yes, yeah. yes her first husband. Okay. And so we exchanged numbers and we kept in contact with her. Um, I had family in, in Arizona and Sean has family in Arizona. I still have family in Arizona. And so we would go down and um, my girls would were friends with her boys and we hung out with Brendan and and Melanie and um so you got to explain that Brendan is Melanie Gibbs husband sometimes that's confusing because Lori's yeah. niece I mean, yeah, is married right. yeah. Melanie to Brandon so there's Brendan yeah. and Brandon so I'm just and Brandon. Clarifying. yeah okay yeah ahead, sorry <laughs> oh yeah that's all right so we would go down and hang, hang out with them and that was that was a fun time we had some good times with them and then um, I just remember her telling me when she met Lori, um, she had met her at a um, preparedness thing and Lori had approached her. And then she had told me when they met Jason Mao and then, you know, she wanted to do. Um, okay, wait, wait, like so I'm a little confused. Us. So Lori and Melanie met Jason Mao, even though Melanie was already a preparedness person speaker so, or Jason wasn't yet Jason wasn't yet he oh, okay. I think they met him in the temple oh, okay. so they met him in the temple and they got um, him into the preparing of people yes oh, they got yeah. him I guess I think he was writing books on like a warrior series and so then we went down there one time and um she had just got some equipment for her podcasts and said she wanted to start doing podcasts and so because she had just gotten her equipment Sean and I did a podcast with her because we were were there visiting but she never aired that one which now I'm kind of grateful she didn't um but um she aired that and then they just started doing podcasts together they'd get together at her house and and do that so but I, I remember Melanie when she first approached me and she was very, very humble. She was very humble. And I, as she got in with preparing a people, I, I saw some changes with her. Um, okay, we'll go to that on our second half too. So I'm writing myself okay. a note so we don't forget. We're coming back to Melanie. Um, let's move on. This one just... This one makes my heart just so sad. But when did you first meet Tammy Daybell? Mm. Um, I used to, um, Sean and I used to go up to our friend's house who lived not too far down the street from Chad and Tammy. And our friends that we would go up with, we would 
we would have like a sweat lodge and do like a native native sweat lodge. It's like a purification. And so we were spending a lot of time up there. We would go with our friends to um, Green Canyon to soak in the mineral pools and just hang out. And it was just kind of like a gathering place at their house because they had the yard and everything. So whenever we had like a preparing a people conference um, or there was like, it was called the universal model. Um, they taught about that too. Um, then we would gather. I at, don't know what that is. Universal model. Universal model. They talk about, um, you know, how they teach about um, evolution. Um, this one talks about how they've proven that um, fossils don't have to take millions of years. Um, and, and I may be butchering this. <laughs> this is kind of what I remember um, to, to make and that there is water out in the universe. And so they, they talk about more of the scientific kind of stuff that way. Now I'm getting it. Now I see where you're going with yeah. that. Okay. And, and so they did those, some of those conferences or events in, um, in Rexburg. And so we were up there and I know that, um, that Sean and um, Julie Rowe did a, a fireside up there at that house and um, so it was just a place where everybody would gather and have, have a meal, you know, hang out with each other, um, different things like that. And so, um, we knew the couple that owned that house and then we would, we'd go to church with them sometimes, but Chad was in a different ward. So it'd be like in the stake. And so we went one time and saw Chad in the hallway and he said, Oh, Tammy is Tammy speaking today. And so Sean and I decided to stay and listen to her speak. And, um, I am very grateful now thinking about it that I actually got to hear her speak other than just Chad. So it was always Chad. It was always Chad's show. If you want to say, but never tell me. And so I listened to her, her talk and I was very impressed with um, her testimony of Jesus Christ and um, the experiences that she shared and, and how genuine she was. Um, so I'm glad that I got to hear that. So that's the first time that I met Tammy um, was listening to her speak actually. So and were her kids there when she spoke? I think they were, but I didn't meet them, meet them. at all. I think everybody was was sitting down because we had already been to the sacrament meeting with our friends there. Yeah. And so we just waited and listened to her speak. So that was that was the first time I, I remember Tammy. Okay, and we're gonna come back to her too. Okay, let's go on to Ron and Nita Webb. Don't know them. Okay. How about Michael and Tara Hardman? Mm -mm. I don't are know the them. Names that I'm getting. Um, David and Shelley Paulson. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, David Warwick. Yes, I know David. Um, I remember meeting David at um, with Mike and Nancy because Mike and Nancy had gotten a hold of Sean and wanted to do a podcast with David Warwick. And so David Warwick was one who had different dreams and different things like that. And um, so we met at his office and they did a podcast together. And that's the first time I really um, was introduced to David Warwick and felt like, um, like he was, he was genuine. His heart was genuine. Um, and he was in the preparing a people group. Yeah. He, 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 doing his talk? he didn't speak a whole lot from mm -hmm. what I understood. He, um, sometimes the spouses didn't want, um, didn't want their, 
I, I feel like some of the spouses didn't want their their um, partners fully engaged mm -hmm. in that. And I think he was one that didn't want that. His wife didn't want that. Mm -hmm. So um, from what I understand, so they had actually just met at his office and, and did a podcast. So you that's really first. Know everybody, happened. you know a lot of people. Here and there. <laughs> okay, how about Audrey, let's see if I can say this right, Baratario? Baratario? Audrey Baratario. Um, actually, I think, I, I think I knew her before, don't quote me on this because it's been a few years, I, I met her before the Preparing the People did. Um, my friend and I would go to the Book of Mormon Expo and we'd talk to people. And sometimes we'd just sit out in the hall and sometimes people would come and speak to us. And, and I remember doing a healing appointment for one of the presenters there, his wife. And I was at sitting behind the, the table and, um, doing the the healing and Audrey came up and asked what I was doing so I told her and she kind of was interested in that and we got to talking to her me and my friend and um we would just see her here and there at some of those and just connect with her I know that she she received things on a spiritual level too like she she had her own spiritual gifts um, and so we just connected with her that way. And I remember being at a Book of Mormon Expo, um, conference and she was there talking to Sean and I, I saw her. And so I walked up cause you know, I knew Sean at the time and was surprised to, she was surprised to see me, um, with Sean. And so. Um, I just knew her through that and connected. And I, I, I think, I can't remember if it was me or somebody else that told her that um, they were doing a preparing a people conference. And then so she just kind of plugged in with, with um, preparing people too. So she was already going to the Book of Mormon Expo like I was and a lot of us. And then, um, then when the preparing a people started, we just went to that, that one too. And of course, I had a reason to go, you know, because um, Sean was the speaker. So, yeah, absolutely. OK, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little break. We're going to have part two that um, will be posted in a couple of days. But I just wanted to get started today with so that you will know everybody, all the players. And then our part two, we'll go in and we'll dive in and find out how these players all come together in okay. kind of a craziness. We're just scratching the surface, kind of getting to know all the players in Chad's inner circle. And on part two, we're gonna take a deep dive. So check back in a couple of days.